The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship at Broadway Baptist Church on this second Sunday of Easter. Alleluia. My name is Emily Maples Davis, and I'm the youth ministry coordinator and the youth and children's music ministry coordinator here at Broadway. If you're visiting among us, we are so glad that you're here. And we recognize that in addition to those of you worshiping here with us in the sanctuary, many of you are joining us online. May our spirits in communion with the Almighty God join together in this hour of worship. Inside our order of service, you will find the life of the church, which will tell you more about who we are, including our mission and vision statements and it will inform you about our upcoming events and important dates. Today in worship, we joyfully welcome the Singing Girls of Texas, who just recently returned from their 12-day Nordic tour to Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. And you might recognize a couple of faces up there this morning, because two of our very own Broadway youth sing in the group. Novella Huynh and my daughter, Abby Davis, which may make me a little biased, but I'm also a choral director, and I can assure you that their sound is heavenly, and it will be a true gift to us today as we worship. Many thanks to their conductor, Kara Simmons, and their accompanist, Sewan Kim, who are also my friends. Lift your eyes and look around. The glory of the risen Christ shines brightly all around us. Let us greet that light as we stand to pass the peace of Christ. Come right over. as we center our hearts and minds around the Spirit of God that exists within each of us, and the Spirit of Christ revealed in ways known and unknown, may the Holy Spirit remind us that indeed the circle will be unbroken. Lift up your hearts. We
Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we come to you to rest in your arms. Please help us to see you even when it seems you are not there. We are your treasured children, loved unconditionally by you. Even when it seems like you're not there and we're having a hard time trusting, it helps us to remember that your thoughts are with us before we sleep, when we wake up, and all day and night. Your thoughts for us outnumber the grains of sand. You send us the Holy Spirit to guide and nurture us. Please help us to remember that you have given us grace and that nothing can separate us from you. As Saxon continues his faith journey with you, help us remind him that you are always with him, protecting him, and that he sees you deeply love him. Lord, help us to remember the same and know that we are your beloved child. Amen.
baptism of Saxon Shanks. This is a very special day in Saxon's life, and it is also an important day in the life of his family. Saxon's mom, Lola Tammy, was baptized 31 years ago this month, and today would have been Saxon's great-grandmother, Lola's 92nd birthday. Today, Saxon is making a public commitment to his church family and to God, the internal and eternal commitment that he has been praying about for a while. Saxon said he has made this decision in his heart and now he wants to share it with you. As we share this special and sacred moment with Saxon, let it be a reminder to all of us of the commitment we made or are thinking about making to God. Remember that God calls us by name and says, you are mine. This is my friend Saxon. He is a second grader at Lily B. Clayton and is studying in the dual language program. Saxon's favorite subject in school is math, and during his free time, he is extremely busy. He likes to play outside and participate in sports like lacrosse and golf and basketball and football. He also likes to spend time with his friends and playing on his iPad, as they all do. His parents say that Saxon has a very big heart. He is always helping others and standing up for people who need protection. He's a great big brother, and he is kind and generous and fiercely loyal to friends and family. And I will also tell you that he is an excellent joke teller. When I asked Saxon what he liked most about Broadway, he immediately said, serving at the agape meal. He also likes his friends and Sunday school teachers, and he enjoys visiting with them and appreciates them helping him know about the ways of Jesus. Saxon is greatly loved by his family, many of whom are here today. He has two sets of grandparents, his mom and dad, his brother Sawyer Joe, uncles, aunts, cousins, friends. He even has his second grade school teacher here with him to witness his baptism. I think it's really cool that your family has been at Broadway for so many years. Saxon is fifth generation of people in his family that have been members of Broadway. So Saxon, I'm gonna ask you some very important questions, okay? Do you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Yes. Do you accept God's grace and forgiveness in Christ? Yes. And do you commit to follow the way of Jesus in the world with the Holy Spirit as your guide? Yes. And church family, do you as a congregation pledge to share in Saxon's journey of faith? Saxon, because you profess Jesus as Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are buried with him in death and raised to walk in new life. Okay. Saxon, I give you this necklace. It has the symbol of the cross, and it is to remind you of today and to the commitments that you have made. When you wear this, remember today. Saxon, remember your baptism and be thankful. Heavenly Father, as we gather to witness and celebrate the baptism of Saxon, a joyful, 
heart and spirited young soul, we are reminded of your promise in Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Today, Saxon embarks on his faith journey, enriched by his love for lacrosse, baseball, and golf. As he, as his admirable pursuit of becoming bilingual, may these interests not only shape him into a well-rounded individual, but also serve as, a, as avenues to demonstrate your love and teachings. Bless Saxon, Lord, with the resilience and teamwork founded on the sports field, the understanding and empathy gained through language, and the compassion and serving seen in his eagerness to help others. As a fifth generation of Broadway, let his heart always be anchored in the community that nurtures him and in the scripture that seeks to learn more about. May this day of baptism be a milestone in Saxon's life, where your grace touches his heart and marks a lifelong journey of faith and devotion. Guide him, protect him, and let your light shine upon him as he grows in your love. We pray that Saxon matures to the seed of faith shone today with the flourish in the steadfast relationship. You will never depart from the path of righteousness and you love that you have laid before him. In, In Jesus, Jesus' name, name we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Let's hear the words from Acts. All the believers were on one in heart, in mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord, Jesus. And God's grace was so powerful at work in them all that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who was in need. This is the word of the Lord.
Let's pray together. O oh God of mystery and new life, we have gloriously celebrated your resurrection, and yet we are still in the early days of Eastertide, still timidly letting the promises of hope and power and victory sink in after remembering the trauma and tragedy that was your death and execution. Today, we remember the disciples huddled fearfully in a locked room, having heard of your resurrection, but not yet having seen you with their own eyes. And we can acknowledge the depth of doubt they must have been feeling. And then you appeared with the words, peace be with you. God, we're not sure. We're still afraid. There's so much to be fearful of in our world, so much death and trauma. We tremble even as we try to exclaim, Christ is risen. Just like the disciples needed your presence, oh Christ, so do we. Come among us with your spirit, your power, and help us overcome our unbelief. Bring your words of peace into our chaotic world and empower us to unlock the doors. May we walk into the full hope and power of your resurrection promise. Make us your resurrected people. Because even when we doubt, you still reveal yourself to us. Even in our doubt, we somehow know deep down that our Redeemer lives. And because Christ lives, all the world has been changed. Because Christ lives, your power has made perfect through weakness, through scars, through sacrificial love, and through a surprisingly joyful renewal. Because you live, we trust your presence is with us, and so we join you as partners in peacemaking to create a world that unlocks all the doors. May your kingdom of heaven on earth come. Because you live, O oh God, we say, Amen. Our gospel reading from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of grace. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Lord, now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As Pastor Jen just said a moment ago, last Sunday was indeed glorious. Church was full and the music was grand. And at the end of the service, Bradley sent us out with a great organ toccata, after which we all departed on a high note, only the, to then have to wait for three hours for a table at lunch. We could have stayed here and had church all of that time. Now we come to what has historically been called Low Sunday. <laughs> Low because compared to last week, the High Holy Day, this Sunday is low in attendance. Spirit is low. Giving is often low, though that's still up to you. And the tide of Easter is low. But I will not be this morning discouraged, for even though it may have ebbed, the Easter tide remains. And sometimes, well, sometimes truly amazing things happen for those who show up on Low Sunday. Just as it did on that first Sunday after Easter, all of those many centuries ago. The scripture says that Thomas was not there with the other disciples on that first Easter Sunday. When the resurrected Jesus appeared to them in the locked room where they had been hiding out for fear of their lives. And Thomas did not believe his friends when they told him that Jesus had come and stood among them and showed them his hands and his side. So then somewhere, someone along the way saddled Thomas with the moniker, the doubter. Though scripture says clearly that there were other disciples who themselves doubted also. Let us be honest this morning. Thomas was not the only doubter. And in a crowd this size, even on low Sunday, there is bound to be a few more doubters right here in this sacred space. In fact, the scriptures call Thomas Didymus, which means twin. And certainly there are some twin doubters along with Thomas here with us today. 
And my prayer for you this morning, my pastoral prayer for you this morning is that you would not feel judged or ridiculed or put down upon, but welcome, even with your doubts, into this sanctuary this morning. Though he doubted, the disciples, we are told in the scriptures, welcomed Thomas nonetheless to continue with them in their community of the early church. And I think that the latter day church ought to learn to do the very same thing. Too often, I think the church has been too quick to distance itself from those who have doubted some of its most basic doctrines. It's as if, I think, we felt threatened by doubts and by questions and did all that we could do to try to distance and squelch them. But is there not, let me ask, is there not something to be said about the gifts of authenticity and sincerity that an honest doubter can bring, which can help make a community of faith more gracious, genuine, reflective, and real? Ought there not to be room for the doubts in others and also room for the doubter in ourselves. Paul Tillich once said that the opposite of faith is not doubt, but certainty. This is a tremendous spiritual teaching, and I think a truism. For in fact, in every act of faith, there is always, always an element of doubt and of uncertainty. Too often, however, it is our, I believe, own anxieties about and denial of our own doubts that make the need for certitude into a God with its credo a crusade. We go literally to war against the doubts of others, I believe, because we have yet to make peace with the doubts of our own. If we are honest with ourselves and with each other, then we could admit that we all have our uncertainties and reservations about these extraordinary claims of our faith. And Thomas comes to us on the second Sunday of Easter, I believe, to challenge us to learn to be a little more honest. 
And his story invites us to consider how the doubter in each of us could be included too. I remember reading some time ago about how the Reverend Howard Moody was approached by a long and faithfully serving congregant within his extraordinary church of Judson Memorial in Manhattan. The man wanted to be baptized and become a formal member of the congregation, but he did not hold all of the same orthodox beliefs of the membership. Reverend Moody wrestled with what to do and then decided at the end to baptize this so-called atheist because he said that the man belonged in the church and that the church belonged to him. Now that may sound peculiar, but I withhold judgment for pastoral considerations and I remember, I remember in the scriptures it says that Thomas was baptized and probably did some baptizing even while he himself did not yet, if ever, hold all the same beliefs which we have come to call orthodox. Thomas did not altogether believe, but he belonged. And as Barbara Brown Taylor puts it, eventually he did something even more important. He beheld. The scripture says that Thomas stuck around and that the disciples stuck with him. And that on the second Sunday of Easter, Thomas stuck his hand inside the hole where Jesus had been pierced and was healed. And Thomas, the doubter, beheld Jesus' hands inside and said, my Lord and my God. You know, as Baptists, it has been our long-standing tradition to be a non-creedal people. That means that we believe that you shouldn't have to sign onto a statement of belief in order to first belong to the Christian community. The story for me today I think informs us that Thomas did not share all the other disciples' same beliefs, but he did share their same faith. And most importantly, most importantly in the story, he shared a profound, profound experience with their same living Christ. In all of the creeds in all of the world cannot contain this Christ. And all of the dogmas and doctrines could never describe the mystery and the power of a personal encounter with this God in Christ who comes to be with us. The invitation for us this morning, something I have said before, 
And that is to learn to give all that we know about ourselves to all that we know about this God who comes to us in Jesus. There are many, many questions, things I cannot answer. I have a diploma on the wall that says I am supposed to be a master of divinity. Really? <laughs> and yet, the truest and deepest thing I can say is that there is mystery and there is power and there is profound, profound experience. When this man named Jesus, whom they killed, walks into a community and says, come and take my hands and touch this hole and see that you can be made well and healed also. So what happened to Thomas? Well, church tradition teaches this, that he went to India and that he established the church in the East before being martyred for his faith in Tamil in, uh, Nadu in AD 72. And in our rose window, which you can check out after the service, The apostles' window, just to my left, there's a small little inset for Thomas which features a carpenter square for his work in building churches and a spear which indicates his manner of death. And about that I would say that the faith of the doubter was something mighty. And the conviction of the one with the questions was something itself that was in the end, well, beyond belief. I believe, but help me in my unbelief, the Father in the Bible told Jesus. And when Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection in the book of Matthew, it says they worshiped him, but some doubted. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. It's always in some way a part of our faith, for without doubt our faith would not be faith, but certainty, which is indeed the very opposite of faith. So there is room for doubt, and there's room for doubters, and there's room for Thomas, and for his twin, and his triplets, and his quadruplets, and there's room for you and for me. Let us not be afraid then to bring our doubts and our questions into this community of faith. And let us not be afraid to let others bring theirs also. And the unbelieving will believe, and the believing will be helped in their unbelief, and everybody, everybody, will belong, and the risen Christ shall come among us all, 
And we shall all together, every single one, behold and say, my Lord and my God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all, and together all of God's people do say, That is the invitation. Some of these claims that we make are indeed extraordinary. But the door is open and Christ comes in and soon in the mystery of this encounter with Jesus, we discover that the God of life and resurrection is among us. I believe, God help me in my unbelief, and God help you too. I will be here to receive anyone who would wish to join this church this morning. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. Holy, holy, holy. 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the name of the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And on that same night, Jesus took the cup and he poured it and he blessed it and he offered it to them saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink from this cup, remember me. I invite the deacons to come forward and receive the elements. In a moment, we will invite the congregation to come forward and partake with us in this sacred meal. Here at Broadway, the table is open to all people. There is no creed or litmus test, no denominational affiliation. This is Jesus' table. It is open to you. So too is this meal and also the heart of this church. May we receive these good gifts in as much faith as we have today by the very grace, love, mercy, and goodness of God. Let us join together in our invitation to the table. With reverence to God in faith and with love to neighbor, draw near and receive this bread and cup as disciples of Christ, remembering that the body of our Lord was broken for us and the blood of our Lord was shed. Come, come, whoever you are, may all who are hungry for joy and justice be filled and may all who thirst for righteousness be restored. Come, let all who hunger and thirst taste the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Amen.
join together in our thanksgiving and profession of faith. We give you thanks for these gifts of grace given in love and received in gratitude. For great is the mystery of our faith and the hope of our salvation. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. Please pray with me. Mother, Father, God, there are so many things that we have doubts about. We don't trust the future. We're unsure of our relationships. We don't trust who we are. But we know that in all things we can trust in you. We trust in your love. We have confidence in your faithfulness. And we know that in the end, we belong to your everlasting love. For all these things, we say thank you. Amen.
wonderful honor this morning to welcome into our community of faith Savannah Palomo, who comes as a member of our youth community here at Broadway uh, with the intention, uh, with profession of faith and the intention of being baptized on Youth Sunday here in just a couple of weeks. So we are so very excited to welcome you your smiling face and your gra gracious, gracious uh, spirit. And uh, it's a big decision for a young person to make. And uh, I commend you for it. And I know that we look forward to your baptism um, when it comes soon. Please join me, congregation, as we welcome Savannah into our community of faith with our affirmation of responses. We joyfully welcome you into this community of grace we offer you our love and friendship, and we promise to be your family as we worship and serve God together. The right hand of fellowship and a warm, warm welcome. Go ahead and be seated next to Emily. Uh, I know the congregation will wish to come and give informal welcome to Savannah at the conclusion of the service. Uh, looking forward to her baptism and celebrating the baptism of Saxon today. We uh, pray for you. So grateful for your five generations in one church, one Baptist church. <laughs> yeah, I, that's something to be said about that. So uh, we give thanks for that. May it be many, many more, we pray. Uh, we've been around here as a church since 1882, and so a lot of generations have seen that baptismal water and these two young people join in that great cloud of witnesses. Finally, uh, beloved, please join me in giving thanks for our music leaders today, the Singing Girls of Texas. We are so grateful. Wonderful to have you with us, uh, along with your families, friends, loved ones. You brought a little something high to Low Sunday this morning. And we are very, very grateful for this and pray blessings upon each and all of you. Depart now, beloved, with the Spirit of God in Christ in you. For the world needs your light and your hope and your deep, deep courage. So go and be brave. Be strong, be kind, and be love. Always be love. Amen.